Hello everyone, my name is Brant Kudrowski. This video covers an organic chemistry lab experiment that involves spinach pigment separation and analysis by column chromatography and TLC. This is part two of the experiment, column chromatography. In this portion of the experiment, we're gonna use a glass pipette as a column. So we're gonna rip off a little piece of cotton wool and shove it in this pipette, tamping it down with a stick till it gets down into the tip. Then we're gonna clamp it Next, we're going to put a funnel on top. We'll add some sand. The sand supports the stationary phase, which is coming next, so two to three millimeters of sand. Now we put in silica gel. That's the stationary phase. You got to be a bit careful with this because it's dusty, so avoid breathing in dust from silica gel. We'll top it off with a little bit of sand on top. That just supports or uh, protects the top of the stationary phase. So you want to make sure that you've got about six centimeters of silica gel. And we're going to use these three solvents for the developing of the column. So first we're going to pipette hexane to the top, and this is going to solvate the column. So you can see the hexane percolates down through. Notice that uh, it's making its way down the column there, and you can see it visually changing. Uh, one thing that's important to note is hexane is a volatile flammable solvent, so you're going to need to be careful with it. Um, but basically, uh, just keep adding hexane to the top until it gets through the column and starts coming out the bottom, and then you'll have added enough. So here it's reaching the bottom of the cotton wool, and it's about ready to drip out the bottom. And there we go. So next we're going to add some hexane to our crude pigment solution. So about a half a milliliter of hexane is going to get added to the crude pigment solution that we prepared in the extraction part of the experiment. So swirl that around with a pipette, get it all dissolved up. Then take that solution and pipette it onto the top of the column. But first we need to remove some of that hexane. So this is using a gentle pressure of air, very, very gentle to try to get rid of some of that solvent. You do have to be really careful with compressed air. You don't want to use too much pressure. You could blow up the column. So here we're putting on uh, the crude pigment solution and we're gonna just give it a gentle push with the compressed air to push it along. We don't wanna push it too far because you don't wanna dry out the column. That's a really delicate kind of thing, especially with the pigment because you can't really see exactly where the sand is. All right, next we're gonna add a bit of hexane to the top and that is gonna help chase the pigments out of the sand layer and get them seeded onto the silica gel. So that's the purpose of that. I'm gonna do just a little more there to get the green pigments all adsorbed onto the silica gel. Then we'll be ready to start eluting the column and we're gonna do that with the 90-10 solution of hexane to acetone. So that gets pipetted on and then when that gets flushed through with the compressed air, the pigments will start to move. So what you'll be able to see here is there's a yellow band that's gonna start moving out in front. Now that is the beta carotene fraction. So beta carotene is the least polar thing in the pigments, the spinach pigments, so it moves the fastest on silica gel. So it's gonna come out ahead of the others and eventually as it makes its way down the column, it'll be all by itself and there'll be some white space between it and the next pigment. So you keep filling up the pipette with that 90-10 solution and then keep applying gentle pressure, being careful not to let the column dry out again. And when you get close then, you're gonna to need to replace the collection vessel down at the bottom with something to catch the beta carotene in. So we're gonna use a pipette, or a, I should say a test tube here. So we put a test tube on there and keep adding a little bit of that 90-10 solution. And then elute a bit further, yellow band comes out as its own material. And if you take a look, you can see behind it, there's a gray band that's starting to come out. So once we have the yellow band completely eluded from the column and we can see the color is completely off, now we're gonna to wanna to put a separate test tube under there to catch that gray band. So that gray band's another photosynthetic pigment. And uh, we're gonna to continue to develop this column or elute this column with that 90-10 solution of hexane acetone to get the gray band off. Once that gray band is out, we're gonna to have to elute with a bit more solution here to get it to come out. And it's color on this one is subtle, so it's not really completely easy to see all the time, but, um, but I think hopefully if you look at it there, you can see it. Once the gray band is off, then 
we're going to do a final flush here to get the green pigments out. Everything else that's still stuck on the column, we're going to elute really quickly by changing the solvent to pure acetone. So acetone is a very polar solvent and it's going to cause all the pigments to move very rapidly. So whatever is left on that column is going to elute now quite quickly. So here we go. And all the green pigments are going to kind of run out. Adding more acetone pushes them a little further. And now you can see we've got a big, bold green band coming out. Now the green band is basically done, and when you take a look at this, you can see there's a yellow band that's on there now. I'm going to actually try to catch that in its own container. So that's a different yellow pigment uh, from beta carotene. Those are xanthophyll type pigments. Those are uh, oxygenated, more highly oxidized versions of beta carotene. They have OH groups on them, so they're more polar, so they come out later. And so I just thought it'd be fun to catch that in its own tube.